Hey, what's up guys, JS2 Cents here, and we're gonna go ahead and continue these hot months with a little bit more water cooling stuff. Especially since we have uh, EK sent over a couple of new products here, and technically they're not really like new products, they're more or less like upgrades to existing product lines. And I figured rather than do a standalone review on this, which would be kind of redundant, I would kind of turn this into a twofer. I would turn this into a, a twofer, well, normally it's two for Tuesday, but it's this is going up on Monday, so we'll, we'll turn this into a two for Monday. That doesn't really work very well, does it? <laughs> Dude. What? It's so small. You really think so? What does the wife think? Well, she says it gets the job done. <laughs> Mine's not that small. Mm -mm. The Fractal Design Node 202. It's not about how big it is but all about how you use it. So EK's got a couple of new things that we're launching here, and we're gonna take the opportunity with this product uh, to kind of talk about radiator thickness, and whether or not thickness really matters. First up is the EK Vardar fans, and we took a look at this months ago, and I said that these were one of the best performing and quietest fans I think I had ever heard, at least at the 1450 RPM range. Uh, of any radiator fan. These things are amazing static pressure, but they're also great at airflow. They're low at uh, power consumption. They're only 0.18 amps for the 2200 RPM fan I'm holding right here. So performance of them was stellar. It was amazing. The problem I had was the fact that they only came in black with gray blade or black shroud with gray blades, unless you got like the 3000 RPM fans, which were all black. A lot of people kind of went, give us all black fans. We want black fans. That way we can put them in any color build and not worry about the way they look. Well, EK stepped up and not only gave you all black fans here in varying RPM ranges, but also a white fan. And the cool thing about this is they also give you a matching black braided cable, PWM cable, as well as a white braided cable for the white fan. So now you have some options here. Now we're not gonna do another performance test on these fans. I'm just gonna go ahead and direct you to the previous video that I already did with the paper test and the radiator flow test and all that sort of stuff. So if you guys wanna see more about the performance of the Vardar fans uh, in the original black and gray color, then go ahead and click the link in the description or annotate it or however I ended up pointing you guys there. Maybe it'll be a little slide out card, I don't know. Now the other thing we're gonna take a look at here are a couple of new radiators. Uh, added to their Coolstream uh, line of radiators. Now I've been running the Coolstream uh, triple radiator in the test bench here ever since I did my cryovenom review last year, the R9290 cryovenom from Vision Tech. And I've been running that radiator ever since in the test bed and been having fantastic results with that. Now that was an overall about a 45 millimeter thick radiator and they've added to their line now, they're ultra slim. As you can see right here, this is a triple radiator. Very, very slim, could fit this just about any case. As well as their XE, which is their extreme. This thing's actually really heavy. But this is their extreme radiator. You can see this thing is just, got some massive girth to it, if you know what I'm saying. Now these radiators are pretty much the same when it comes to fin density and layout, uh, build quality, the construction. Uh, with the exception, obviously, of the thickness. So that got me thinking, maybe we should talk a little bit more in this video uh, about how radiator thickness really compares. Let's hope I can do this without knocking these over, my God. So how these two radiators compare to each other and where you should install thick radiators versus thin radiators, or whether or not you should even go with more fan options on a radiator, like triple or a quadruple or a double versus a thicker, smaller radiator, if that makes sense. So hopefully I explained that well. And what we're gonna try and do today was we'll to go ahead and get started. Now thin radiators are nice because you can pretty much fit them in most cases. I mean, most cases today anyways are, are built with water cooling options in mind where you're gonna have plenty of space between the top of the motherboard and the top of the case so that you could fit at least a 30 millimeter thick radiator like this one here with the 25 millimeter thickness of a fan. So you've got 55 millimeters of total clearance needed in most cases to fit a slim rad. And that's gonna be pretty much acceptable for most people. Now, if you're gonna be installing just a CPU, for the most part, you could get away with just a 240 millimeter rad at 30 mil thickness like this. It's gonna give you about the same cooling as your all-in-one water cooling options. The difference is if you're doing a custom loop like this and you're gonna get better quality components, a better radiator, better tubing, better pump, better block. So you would get 
a better quality loop doing a custom loop over an all-in-one even though it may be a 240. So here's a common question that I get in my inbox an awful lot is something along the lines of, Jay, my case can fit three 120s in the top. Should I get a triple radiator or should I get a double or should I get a 120 thick radiator or a 240 thick radiator? I just don't know what to put on there. Well, here's the general rule of thumb. My personal recommendation is always going to be get a radiator that matches the amount of fans that you can exhaust air from your case. So what that means is if you were putting this, let's say the top of you know, a, a Corsair case or a Fractal Design case and you have room for three 120s, as long as you can fit this in the top of your case with no obstructions below it, then I would always recommend going with a radiator that matches the amount of fans that you have. So if you have a, a triple, go with a triple. If you have a quadruple, go with a quadruple. The difference in cost between larger radiators in terms of surface area uh, by length is usually only a five or $10 between radiators, sometimes more depending on the radiator, but you're gonna find that you're gonna have a lot more surface area and a lot more cooling headroom. So if you decide later on you wanna add a CPU block, or not a CPU block, hopefully that's already in your loop, but a GPU block or maybe motherboard block or something, you're gonna have additional headroom because as you add more watts of cooling needed, you need larger radiators to account for that. Now with that said, a lot of folks will have a case, something like, uh, you know, the Fantex Enthu Primo going, I've got a ton of room. I've got, I can put massive radiators in there. So should I go with a thin radiator, radiator or should I go with a thick radiator? Well, the general rule of thumb here is going to be, you will get more cooling dissipation by adding a longer radiator that's thinner than going with a shorter radiator that's thicker. Does that, I hope that makes sense. You're gonna get better efficiency in cooling by going with a longer rad with more spread out surface area than say going with a smaller radiator that's thicker if you can fit the longer rad. So something like this is going to offer you good cooling, but this is not going to equal the same, at, even though this is, this is twice as thick as this guy here, it's twice as thick, this is not gonna offer twice the cooling dissipation as this. It doesn't really work that way. Now, one of the downsides with going with thick radiators like this is uh, they're a little bit more difficult to bleed or get all the air out of because there's a lot more room for the air to get trapped in here. The top of the radiators that are thick like this almost act like a reservoir in their own sense where there's a lot of place and a lot of room for air to get trapped in the top half of the radiator. So you end up having all these rows going across the rad where only the bottom ones would be filled with fluid and the top ones could be filled with air for quite some time. So you would actually notice that your coolant reservoir would continue to drop for weeks after getting the system, you know, at least what you thought bled, would continue to drop for quite a while. Now that's not to say that these are bad. I'm not saying these are bad whatsoever. There are times when radiators like this are necessary because you can't fit the longer rads in there. You can't, maybe you can't fit a quad, but you can fit a thick 360 then something like this is definitely gonna offer you the extra cooling dissipation and cooling capacity needed to add things like your CPU and the GPU or even multiple GPUs depending on you know, how much headroom you need on cooling and how much watts dissipated. So that is where a thick radiator would definitely come in handy. And the other thing you have to keep in mind with this guy though obviously is you've got, let's say this is 80 millimeters. Uh, I don't think this is 80, maybe it's 80 but you've got uh, at least, let's say 60 millimeters and then a 25 millimeter fan, you've got to make sure your case has 85 millimeters of clearance plus the length of the fittings coming off. So you might need 100 millimeters of clearance to run this bad boy. But lots of cases nowadays are actually offering that sort of clearance, so you might opt to go with something like this. The cool thing about the thick rad that the thin rads don't have, as you can see, there are no fittings on the backside. There's, there's ports on the front, but not on the back. The thick guy here actually offers you some ports on the back as well. So you can have it come in one side and out the other, or you can just get, kind of get creative with that. So I hope that's helped answer some questions there. We'll just kind of recap this again. I would always recommend going with as much length surface area as you possibly can. And I know guys, this, some of the gestures and stuff we're doing here, I'm, I'm sure are gonna end up with some, some pretty, uh, questionable memes. So always go with length over thickness if you have the option. If you don't have the option, then you're gonna wanna go with the thickest rad that you can fit in the space that you're gonna put it and still have room for your fans and your fittings. You'll find that you'll actually get better cooling out of a 360, 30 mil rad usually 
than say a 45 mil 240 or even a 60 mil 240. It just de really depends then on a lot of other factors like your fan speed, your fan uh, pressure, um, the amount of intake you've got coming into the case, the placement of the radiator. I mean, there's a lot of factors. So anyway, that's my recommendations, guys. Hope today's video has actually helped you learn something when it comes to water cooling. And if it didn't, well, then I'll try harder next time. But then again, I am your instructor and well, uh, there's only so much I'm capable of, especially when sometimes I'm surprised I can actually dress myself in the morning. Now, who am I kidding? My wife dresses me. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get the heck on out of here. Thanks for watching today's video, and we will see you in the next one.